This video contains the solutions to the vectors in three dimensions practice problems. For this first problem, we're given three vectors, a, the vector 2, minus 2, 5, b, 6, 2, negative 3, and c, 0, 1, negative 2, and we're asked to compute this combination of those vectors. So we're going to use the same rules that we used for vectors in two dimensions, we just have a third component to worry about. First, we're going to multiply the 2 by the vector b, which just means we're going to double each of b's components, so we get 12, 4, negative 6. So now we combine these vectors together. So in the x components, we've got 2 minus 0 minus 12. In the y component, we've got negative 2 minus 1 minus 4. And in the z component, we have 5 minus negative 2 minus negative 6. 2 minus 0 minus 12 is negative 10. Negative 2 minus 1 minus 4 is negative 7. And 5 minus minus 2 is 5 plus 2, that's 7 minus minus 6, that's 7 plus 6, which is 13. And that's our solution. In this one, we want to find a unit vector that points in the same direction as b. And so what we want to do is normalize b, or as we also called it, unitize b. And that means we want to take b and divide it by its length. So first we need to figure out the length of b. The length of b is the square root of the sum of the squares of its components. So we take 6 squared plus 2 squared plus negative 3 squared, that's 36, plus 4, plus 9, that's the square root of 49, which is 7. So this means we want to take b and divide it by 7, which is the same as multiplying b by 1 7 So that's 1 7 times 6 to negative 3, which is going to give us 6 7 2 7 negative 3 7 Now we're being asked which vector has the greater magnitude, a plus b or b minus c. So we need to figure out what these two vectors are, and then we'll figure out the magnitudes of these two vectors, and we'll just figure out which one's bigger. So a plus b, that's 2 minus 2, 5, plus the vector 6, 2, negative 3. And b minus c is the vector 6, 2, negative 3, minus the vector 0, 1, negative 2. So a plus b is 8, 0, 2 and b minus c is 6, 1, minus 1. So the magnitude of a plus b is the square root of the sum of the squares of its components. So that's the square root of 8 squared plus 0 squared plus 2 squared. That's 64 plus 0 plus 4. That's the square root of 68. And the magnitude of b minus c, that's the square root of the sum of the squares of its components, so that's 6 squared plus 1 squared plus negative 1 squared. That's 36 plus 1 plus 1, which is the square root of 38. And since 68 is bigger than 38, the square root of 68 is bigger than the square root of 38, and so a plus b is the vector that has the greater magnitude. Now we've got a word problem. We have a submarine that's climbing at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal and heading to the northeast. We're given the speed of the submarine, and what we want is the components of the velocity in the east, north, and vertical directions. Remember that we're in three dimensions now, so east we can think of as the x direction, positive x direction, north is the positive y direction, and then up will be the positive z direction. So because it's hard to visualize things in three dimensions, what I want to do is break this problem down. Let's look at this from two different perspectives. Looking at a side view of this submarine, this lets us understand the idea that the submarine is climbing at an angle of 30 degrees. So from the side, we see that above the horizontal, the submarine is climbing at this angle of 30 degrees, and this is not distorting the length of the, uh, the velocity vector. So from the side, this vector really does have length 20 knots. And knots here just stands for nautical miles per hour. And that lets us figure out the vertical component of this velocity vector. So this vertical side of this right triangle, if I call that maybe v for vertical, what we see is that opposite over hypotenuse, the sine of 30 degrees is v over 20, and so v equals 20 times the sine of 30 degrees, which is 10. This also allows us to figure out this horizontal component by using the cosine. So the cosine of 30 degrees is h over 20, adjacent over hypotenuse, and that means that h is going to be 10 
times the square root of 3. Cosine of 30 degrees is radical 3 over 2. Multiply that by 20, we get 10 radical 3. But that 10 radical 3 is not the x or the y component. We've turned ourselves to look at the submarine from the side. Now we need to turn ourselves to look at it from the top down. So from the top view, using our normal compass directions, so east is to the right, north is up, our submarine is heading to the northeast. Now this view of the vector does distort its length. Since we're looking at it from the top down, we're not seeing the true length of the vector. What we're seeing is the projection of this vector onto the xy plane. So what we're seeing from this top-down view is actually a vector whose length is the horizontal component that we figured out from the side view. So that distance is 10 radical 3. Now because we're going at a 45 degree angle, we're going directly to the northeast. This angle is 45 degrees, and so we can figure out the x and y components of the vector that we're looking for, again using trigonometry. So for example, the sine of 45 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse, so y divided by 10 radical 3. So y is 10 radical 3 times the sine of 45. The sine of 45 is radical 2 over 2, so that's going to give us 5 radical 6. And similarly, x is going to be 10 radical 3 times the cosine of 45 degrees, which is again going to be 5 radical 6. So we've now figured out the components of the vector that we're looking for. The x and y components are 5 radical 6, and the vertical component is 10. And we can check this by making sure that the magnitude of this vector is the original speed of 20 that we were looking for. The square root of the sum of the squares of these components really does work out to be 20. All right, here we have another application problem. So we've got an airplane flying horizontally due north at 20 miles per hour, encountering a horizontal crosswind blowing east at 20 miles per hour, and a downdraft blowing vertically downward at 10 miles per hour. And we want to find the speed of the plane relative to the ground. So this is giving us the three components of this airplane's velocity. So due north at 20 miles per hour means that the y component is 20. Remember, the way we're going to think about this is if I draw my three coordinate axes here. So here's my x-axis, here's my y-axis, here's my z-axis. Positive x-axis, that's going to be east positive y-axis, that's going to be north, and positive z-axis, that's going to be up. So knowing that we're plane is flying due north at 20 miles per hour tells us that the y component is positive 20. The wind blowing east at 20 miles per hour is going to add a 20, positive 20, to our x component. And the fact that we have a downdraft vertically downward at 10 miles per hour is going to give us a negative 10 in our z component. So this is our plane's velocity vector. And so the speed is the magnitude of the velocity vector, which is just going to be the square root of the sum of the squares of these components. So that's 400 plus 400 plus 100. That's the square root of 900, which is 30 in this case. That'll be miles per hour.